Hi viewers, you are on to easy for educational blog. If you are new in this section, this uh, video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you have any question, you go down to the comment section and drop your question. Help to share the link, friends and your well wishes. Today we are going to be looking at chemistry aspects, uh, the practical as this year's NECO exam is concerned. We are going to be looking at interpretation to the practicals, the analysis of the salts, as well as the acid base titration. But I am going to start with the first aspect of the exam, which is the titration and what um, what we are going to look at, the acid, we are going to look at the base and then the salt. Uh, basically, interestingly, we are going to be looking at acid-base reaction. Okay, we are giving that um, AN, that is the acid, AN contains a 9.40 cm cube concentration of HNO3 per DMQ of solution. Sometimes whatever that comes out from the yellow paper or white paper, sometimes these examiners have a way of changing these questions, these concentrations. So it may not exactly come as that concentration given. Okay, it may not come out exactly. It may not be 9.5 exactly, it may be something else. But the first thing remains that you follow the question analytically as I'm going to demonstrate it subsequently as we go in this video. So AN is supposed to be your solution of HNO3 of a particular concentration which I'm still going to state in this video the concentration that is given for now that's what we're going to use to analyze the problem and then the BN the BN is 4.2 gram of sodium carbonate sodium trioxide carbonate for uh, a DMQ concentration is all about molar concentration we have on this of 4.2 of this Na2CO3, so this is acid base titration, and then the salt is just two salt, one soluble salt and one insoluble salt. So the first salt they mentioned it as Xn. Xn happens to be um, the zinc chloride, zinc. I mean zinc trioxide carbonates, zinc trioxide carbonates for that's the XN, and then the YN is aluminium chloride. Okay, that is the what is given. The indication the analysis now continues. Okay, of course, you should know it's a strong acid. This is a weak base. Uh, this is an insoluble salt. Insoluble salts, and this is a soluble salt. This is a soluble salt. That is a preamble. For example, you know, this N means number, repeated number of the concentration. Uh, candidate has its own concentration. Each candidate should have 150 of the concentration of this specific alice in the white paper, which I just told you is 9.5 thereabouts. CN. Of the cork of this, per one candidate, per one candidate should have 150 centimeter cube of its cube of this concentration. The kind so that's all this enemy for for A, N. Same thing with B, N. Same thing with X, N. One spatula full of this is X, N. Too many candidates in the center. One spatula full of this, too many candidates. But no, on no account of the two sums be mixed together in any proportion. They cannot be mixed. So we're going to treat XN separately and YN separately as far as this exam is concerned. Okay, we're going to, um, in this video, we're going to look at the pro um, possible question now. Possible question that are, we'll try to preempt these people. What kind of nature of the question and we'll try to analyze it in this video. Break it down to the very same points that you will understand. So we're going to look at a possible question. You're going to see a question like this, that A is a solution of 
0 0.150 mole per dm cube HNO3. Um, this is my concentration for this video. I don't know what is going to be the concentration that the but concentration still remains. The fact still remains that whenever you are giving concentration of a particular um, standard or non-standard solution, you should know that in the course of the calculation, you don't need to solve the molarity or the concentration anymore. So, but this for this video, let's use this as a molar concentration of HNO3, and then um, B B is. Uh, anytime you see A, that means that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And whenever you see B, this is what I'm talking about. Whenever you, whenever I mention SN in this video, I'm talking about this salt. Uh, whenever I mention this salt in this, this in this video, I mean I'm talking about this salt. Okay. So B, B contains B contains contains. 2.1 2.1 gram of maybe anhydrous anhydrous Na2CO3 per 250 per 250 cm3 okay let me say per 500 per 500 cm3 of solution that's how it always look like of solution. Okay. That is all what you need. And then your question number one. Well, your question number one, A, will always be put solution A. Put solution A into into the burets and titrates against 20.0 or 25.0 centimeter cube of solution B using methyl orange as indicator okay that is basically what you're going to see on that question okay as indicator now you also see that where you start from this it's also see that record the volume of your pipettes, you also see this. Record the volume of the pipettes and try to repeat repeat the the titration several times to obtain consistent or concordant titans. You see a lot of things like that on the exam day. But I'm going to show you how to deal with it in this video. So record the volume of a pipette. Carry out the titration. I was just supposed to do that, but I'll just mention it. Carry out the titration to several times to obtain consistent titles. And then you will like see another question. I think that will be okay. Before the end of this question, this part, this is number one A, you will like um you're gonna be instructed by the examiner. That you are to tabulate your burette readings after you might have carried out this titration experiment for several times to see if the figures are consistent. You will see tabulate your burette reading, tabulate your burette reading, and calculate the average volume of acid or titrant used. That will bring to the end of question number one A. And this question number one A, this part carries. A total mark of 10 or 12 marks sometimes 10 or 12 marks you don't joke with these parts it's the most simplest part as far as this number one is concerned uh question 1b will be the main calculation aspect of the question main calculation with the way you do the calculation 
Uh, that part also carry my but not as okay. That part may carry up to ten marks as well. Ten marks. So if the if the first part, if the one A carries twelve marks, that means the total mark of number one will be twenty two marks. So you already know that what you're going to do in this number one is very, 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 very peculiar, very, very particular to you achieving the success of the next subsequent uh, question you may be answering that. Is. So if number one is or not correct, that means it's going to affect number one B, and then you start by losing all the mark. Question number one, and it's not that the question number one very well is already I've already passed the exam. That is one secret about this uh, chemistry practical this paper. It should be paper three. Okay, I would like us to go down to the number one A now before we now introduce number one B. Okay, before we introduce number one B, let's deal with these facts now. Okay, I'm sorry because we don't have we're not having the setup in this video, but I promise in the next video I'm going to run this. Uh, I'm going to run it in this video practically for better understanding. But uh, get with us in this video. I'm going to just illustrate this on the board as alternative to practical. I'm going to be using the board as a, my practical techniques now. So I will look at this question number one A, and there are necessary apparatus that should be available for the success of this number one A. That is the apparatus for acid based titration or any form of titration. You cannot uh, deal away with the fact that you must have your retort stand with clamp. Retort stand is one of the apparatus. Retort stand with clamp. A retort stand with clamp would look like is a retort stand with a base down standing on the table. It is retort stand. You see a clamp somewhere here. Clamp. Okay, it's going to hold the burette in a vertical position. It's going to hold the burette now. So the burette's much more vertical position. And, then, and you're going to have to jet on it. Jet on it. You're going to have to jet on it. Sometimes you have a small ball inside, you don't see the ball. Sometimes it may come with a clip. Okay. And then, of course, you know it's calibrated. Yes, starting from here, zero to here, 50 capacity, all in centimeter cube. So we have something like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Here's going to be one. Now, for a measure the record star with clamp, we're going to also look at the pipettes, the pipettes, the pipettes, the pipettes are very important. Um, I'm going to use this type of pipettes. This is a standard pipette. Okay. You yeah, already had a mark on it. A mark on it. Okay. Sometimes it will, it will come with a label. Because um, if you look at the question, you mentioned titrate against 20 or 25. So it will either be 20 or 25. Well, let me, I'm using the one of 25 size. Male, 25 centimeter cube. Okay. So. Once the solution of the, the concentration of the B is at this mark, is assumed that the standard volume of the B is measured. Now, what I want to tell you about is uh, in this video about this practical acid based titration is all about standardization. Yes, so we have to want to do standardization of one uh, concentration that is not standard, maybe concentration whose uh, solution whose concentration is not accurately known. Can use titration to determine such concentration. Okay, that's why in titration, the lower court standard solution is a solution whose concentration is accurately known. Well, those concentrations that is not known accurately can be standardized using titration. Titration is one method we use in volumetric analysis or on the quantitative analysis of results. Acid based titration is one of the aspects of titration. So has there there's uh, several types of titration. The one we did in the previous video, that's why interpretation, that was another aspect of titration that has to do with radiometric, iodometric, oxidometric, redox titration. But this form of titration is very simple. We're just dealing with acid and then base. So everything will be so pure. You know what goes here. You know what will be here. Basically, the acid here, HNO3, basically is a titrant. So, what I'm going to do, they say put in, so I'm going to actually put HNO3 
in this build. I'm going to deliver it. Carefully deliver. So I'm going to use a delivery tool, which is my funnel. It goes in right here. So I'm going to transfer this HNO tree to this calibrated burette. What I'm going to do is to gently, because this HNO tree already is placed in a structure, in a, a piece of apparatus. That's the beaker. Okay, it's 250 millimeters. So you're going to have your solution of the A, the solution A. So I'm going to transfer this here to make sure I obtain my initial reading or my first reading. Okay, I will decide to, to align my initial reading to be at this point, the zero. So this funnel is not going to be too close to this point. So we're going to have something like this. So the funnel is this right here. Okay, it's going to help me carefully deliver the solution. Immediately after delivering the solution, and I was able to, before I, before I deduce my initial reading, this one should not be here. It should be removed. It should be removed because it's going to affect the volume. Supposing there's a drop of it after I might have taken the initial volume. There's an extra drop of the solution of A. Why you have taken your initial reading on it is going to affect the results, and that will not be good. That is the reason why you are taking off the, the funnel after pouring the solution A into the burrows. But remember, the, the success or the accuracy of this um, experiment depends on the purity of this thing you are seeing here. So, before this titration, before this titration, there will be a cleansing. We're going to wash these burettes here with this solution here. We're going to wash this big bread with solution A. You run it off. Make sure there is no clear case of bubbles. Once that happens, put the acid into the burette. And when you do that, try to make sure your table, your table of readings is available. But before the table of reading, there are two things you must do before the table of reading. You want to collect all the marks up. Every point, make sure you record the volume of pipettes. Is that 20? Is that 25? It must be stated so that the examiner will know the actual volume of, of, of um, pipettes base that you are working with. Right? Because they gave you two volumes at the same time. So if you look at this one, you always look at the size you need to be written on the pipettes. You state there that the volume of pipettes, volume of pipettes, should be recorded as. This in two decimal places, centimeter cube, volume of pipettes. That is this pipette. It should be stated. And now, now that you have all the acid here, we're going to take it that the acid is out here. This is how the acid goes. So, this is the acid that has already been poured into this piece of apparatus now. When I want to take readings, I don't take readings from, it appears to me that this look as if it is already zero, but I don't think it's zero. We're going to be taking it from the lower, lower point, lower meniscus. So lower meniscus here, reach, it is actually 0 0.10. It must be in two decimal places. That is the initial reading. It can be 0, 0.00 for initial. So depending on the choice of your initial, that's my choice is 0 0.10. Now having done this, next is to use this piece of apparatus. You already have your, your next um uh, the next speaker here. This one is going to be so the solution here, we are actually going to use this piece of apparatus to measure it accurately to identify that as a B. They say titrate that gains. So you don't know the volume of this one. You are yet to find the volume of this. But I already know the volume of this. The volume of this is yet to be known. But this volume of this is already known. The one whose volume is unknown is citrant. The one whose volume is known is the analytes. The analyte is the base. The titrant is the acid. So we are yet to find out the volume of the titrant during the course of the titration. When we are currently mixing the volume of it, both of concentration. Okay, when we start to mix up the the point we come where the color changes. Where the both hydrogen ion 
and hydroxylion are now put present in this mixture. But one is if one is in excess react is one if one is excess reactant, it will come with a color change, and that is the end point. But that will come when you transfer this. So pick this, transfer it, that's why we call it is called transferring pipettes. Because sometimes you call it the problem of transferring pipettes. You transfer it immediately to this piece of apparatus that will be here. Trans um, transfer the transfer to, do to this piece of apparatus. Let me understand it like this. Okay. So you transfer what you have mentioned. You don't raise this conical flask, a linear flask, with the base. Just like you rinse this with acid, you rinse this with base before I actually start using it. You don't rinse this with anything. Okay, you transfer the exactly measured 25 centimeter cube of the base measured. And before you start titrating, since it's acid based titration, you must indicate. That's where the indicator will now come in. You are just used, you have to use two drops of metal range. Any otherwise, excess of two drops will lead to overshooting at the end point. So, to ensure that the overshooting does not happen, you have to add just two drops of the choice indicator. And the choice indicator is metal range. So, you add two drops of indicator, check the color change. I think it's going to be pure it's yellow. Let's see yellow. So, once you do that, here it will be yellow. Here, indicating that what is here is a base solution. And now then, you're ready to carry out with your first experiment, which is going to be your trial or your rough titration. Start it. Always ensure, as far as the equation is concerned, you're going to do a rough titer. Use the rough titer to now monitor the success of order. Use it to now control the first experiment, second experiment, and then third experiment as the case may be. So you start titrating. And gradually, once you are titrating, the volume is decreasing. It will happen until the color changes. Okay, now I'm going to have something very interesting here. I'm going to have um, here 13. Okay, 13. And then from 13, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 14. Okay, and then at this point, at this point, or the exact point, this changes from yellow to light, to light pink or orange. Okay, at this point, it happens. This first point here is going to be my initial reading. That is always the first reading. And then this point now is going to this point now where it is 13.1, um, 13.2. This point now we have 13.20 is going to be my final reading. Okay. So I'm going to draw a table now. This is going to be the rough expression. You do the same thing again and again and again. Okay, and when you are doing it again and again and again, you are doing it to ensure consistent titer. So you're going to do it again and again. So let this first one be your rough titration. Okay, so if that is the case now, I'm going to do something in this video now. Should in case that maybe I'm suspecting that the titer value is 13.20. So I'm going to work the I'm going to use calculator now to to formulate the table. Should in case I know the end point value, I don't need to go and stress myself to do the titration, first one, second one, third one, fourth one, because it relates with rough titration, first titration, second titration, and the last titration, that's the full titration. But if I don't want to do all this, this stress, I want to go straight to start doing my question number 1B, I just need to do, having know the idea that it's 13.20, I'm not going to, in this video, calculate how to calculate the end points. That's um, currently practical, but I'm just assuming that if this is the title value, how am, I, how, am I, how am I going to put up the table and it look exactly well as if the table uh, was actually obtained from a rigorous titration? So, this is the first titration that we've done. Follow the same pattern 
do the next one. Do you why you are doing this several times is to make sure that your values, the readings you're obtaining from that same result with that same consideration is still in concordance. That's why it's that's why it's experiment, that's why it's chemistry. Okay, now I'm going to look uh, we're going to look at the model table now, show you how a model table should look like to end this uh, mark on question number one A before calculating your average volume of A used. This is the table now. So um I'm going to we're going to fit the table together. When you don't get it, you just pause the video and check what we are doing. So uh, I have this I already suspected to be the n of this value of the teacher. What I'm going to do now is to just start 13, 13.2. I'm going to add to the to this number. I'm going to add either 0 0.5 to it or 0 0.4, 0 0.3, depending. So we'll add 0 0.5 to that value. And that is giving me 13.7. Which is in today's smart places. So I'm write it here. 13.70. Okay, that's my rough. So what I will do now, I'm going to know I'm going to use one two three as my title value. So this is what it is, 13.20. What I will do to make sure that I know that these two values are not concordant. When we're talking about the issue of concordance, we're looking at plus or minus 0 0.20 minimum. Anything less above this is wrong. That way, it's plus or minus. So, if you check this, if you use 13, say 13.70 minus 13.20, the difference will always be 0 is to, to the more than 2 points, 0 0.2. That's why these two are not correct. So, what I will do is to either subtract or add 0 0.05 or at least 0 0.10 to what I have here. I can obtain the two readings here. So if I add or subtract, let's say 13.2, 13.2 minus 0 0.05, I have, so what goes here will be 13.15. So if I do the same here, I can have 13.10. Okay. That is what it is now. So, um, to here, it's just very simple. I can, all here, can use 0 0.00 throughout. I can decide to say, okay, this plus this give me 13.70. I can actually use this initial here. I can find that he has initial for this one, 13.70. To know what is going to be here, I'll add this put. So I'm going to add, I will add, 13.2 plus 13.7 that's giving me 26.90 as initial here. I can still use this 26.90 here. So find out that addition of both of them, you know, the peak seven fifty. And also know that if I use 26.90, Subtract it from 10, so minus 13.70, I'm going to get this. So what am I going to get it? I will do the addition immediately. That will be 26.9 plus 13.15. I'm getting 40.05. Go here. 40.05 goes here. I cannot, by any means, use this here. It's not possible. Because additional amount of it uh, should be giving me anything that's 50. So I can go back to the initial again at 0.00. Yeah, I have 13.1. This is not going to be, this is not accurate. It's very accurate. This is very accurate. So these three are very accurate. So this value is null and void. So we use this three as our average, our average title. And depend on this three. So now my average title. I will summarize question number one. Average, average volume of A used is 13.20 plus 13.15 plus 13.10 all divided by 3. All answer is 13.15. Thirteen point one five centimeter cube. 
that is my average volume of acid use got here from my own table. You can pause the video and look at the table once again and see if you can try to attempt yours. Okay, that is on question number 1A, which, like I said, is total of 12 marks. Correct. So you make sure that there are the units should be stated here clearly centimeter cube because the volume of your the volume of your pipette is already uh, been mentioned in centimeter cube. So let your volume be in both units. If you are using the centimeter cube, the DM cube, that means here should also be in DM cube so that you be uniformity in your volume. And the same thing with uh, concentration. So this is what it is at this point. Then don't forget to make sure before this table you have recorded the volume of your pipette and then state the indicator, the choice of indicator you're using for this uh, titration. So this is how to aim. And make sure that your final initial reading almost be in two decimal places. It is very, very important you know that. Okay, I'm going to go to this side. I'm through with this question number 1A. I'll go straight to question number 1B. I see what we're going to do. Oh, we're going to be making reference to the table to solve that one day. But that's going to be the um, final point on this thing. We'll question number two in the thing. Okay. Okay. One B. One B. You see questions right from the information from your results and information provided above. And there's information here. Calculates R. Since the molar concentration of the acid, HNO3 is already known, do you see? Calculates conch of B in mole DMP. Specifically, would like in this video to mention this as X2 for a purpose. Uh, your mind may be going towards that. I mean, the examiner. So, we try to prevent them this time. So you like see um uh the question the molar mass molar mass molar mass molar mass of molar mass of x to c o three in b in gram per mole. Well you also going to look at the possibility that it may ask us to find the value value of x value of x in x to c o3 what is the access to find the volume of the gas because gas is going to be elaborated iv volume of c o2 at stp you look at the question and then that's what we're going to be doing now shortly okay i'm going to solve that problem this side this i'm simply making reference from this table Anything that is consigning the volume of acid depends on that. This is going to be 13.15. Okay, we make reference to that to solve question number one B. And that is the uh, end to that part. And then we'll look at number two questions. Okay, one B R does this. How do we calculate the concentration of B in more First of all, I'm going to be writing the equation between this and this. To actually know the Amount the stoichiometry, the more ratio balance. Okay, very very important. Okay, so we're gonna look at this. We start from H N O three. Matter still is Aqueous plus X two C O three. Matter still is still Aqueous. Okay, so we're gonna have salt now. It's gonna be salt of um, two of these now because the X here. Is half equivalent of plus one. NO3 is minus one. So it will be very wise to know that X is only in X NO3. Two of it. And because of two has two of NO3 has appeared here, so that was gonna affect both H and NO3. So H here, two of it is gonna actually bond react with oxygen here. It's uncommon for them to react with carbon. Come on to react with X, so they're going to react with oxygen quickly to form H2O, whose matter states is still liquid, aqueous, then plus what? CO2 gas. 
is what happens. This is what the product is. It's the reactant. It's what I'll buy. We're going to take um, the reactant seriously. As to know the more ratio, the more ratio of passing reacting is just two. More ratio of the base reacting is just one. I will have to state it emphatically. Uh, more ratio, more ratio of acid to base is two is to one, and then using CA. VA all over CB VB equals to NA all over NDB. Okay. Who are at the go to marking center most likely? Stick this, have your mark. What do you do? Do your rice solution. Okay. I'll say by sub stituting. I'm going to write this, so this CA, anytime I see CA, now I'm going to replace it with 0 0.150. And so anytime I see VA, that means I'm going to go to my title value from that table. I think I've got 13.15 over. Since you're looking for CB, CB is still depending times the volume of the prepared recorded 25.00. Everything should be equal to. This is 2 over 1. That is what you do. Okay. Let me do the end part. So, what you will do now at this point is by cross multiplying, by cross multiplying, by cross multiplying, you're going to have this times this times this. Let me start with from this. This times this is 50. 50 CB plus 50 CB is equals to the first movie. So let me go like So we have um, 0 0.150 times 13.15. I'm having 1.9725. That works. The figure we have no cross multiply this. So what I will do now is I'm going to divide, divide both side by 50. So I'm going to have a 50 CB over 50 equals 19725 over 50. So this, so my CB now is, and then I'm having in three. Significant figure of 0 0.039 half in my calculator 3945. I don't need all of them. I will just say 0 0.0395 is okay. The unit must be clearly stated, which is in mole per DMQ. That is the answer to one number one BI. Pause the video and check what we did. So we go to BII. To find the molar mass of H2CO3 in B in gram per mole. Okay, then, okay, before I solve this B, I, I, I want to show you another alternative way of solving one B. Suppose you don't want to use formula method, you don't want to use formulas in a CAVA. You can still actually solve it this way. You can still find the amounts. Amount of A is equal to molar concentration times volume over 1000. So molar concentration of A is 0 0.150 times 13,000 over 1000. 0.0019725 mole. Okay, that's the amount of A. Now we're going to find the amount of B now from the equation I have that two moles of HNO3 reacted with one mole of X2CO3. So now 0 0.0019725 mole of HNO3 should be giving me what? X. So X now 
is 0 0.0019725 times 1 mole of XO, x to CO3, that is um, x is 0 0.00098. 625 mole of B. This is mole of A, this is mole of B. Okay. And then, if I want to find the molar concentration finally now of that B, I'm going to solve in this little space. So, starting from here now, to find the concrete, I'll still take the same process here. That amount, so no, sorry, it will not be molar concrete now. So if I do my right substitution, I'm going to have that uh, molar conch now from this formula now. Molar conch, molar conch should be amount times this one. Should be amount. This time is amount of this B now, which is this value. Amount of B times 1000 over volume. This is going to give me amounts. So I'll substitute this amount 0 0.00, 0 uh, another 0, 0.98625 times 1000 over volume of base is 25, the pipette 25. Let's see what we got now. So what we'll be having now times 1000, 0 0.039. So the 3945 is approximately because you only need three significant uh, figure. That's another alternative way, but preferably go by the first analysis. So that's better. So let's go to question number one P. So the BII now will be to find the molar mass. You already know your molar concentration of B. Let me say this. Molar concentration, molar conch of B is still 0. 0.0. 395. Okay, I'm going to find the mass concentration of B. Very simple to do that. And you're giving 2 my reacting mass. So I'll convert the reacting mass to mass concentration by saying that 500 centimeter cube there contains contains just 2.1. If it, that's five, if this is here, how many will be here? So 1000 will now contains you don't know x. X is 1000 now times 2.1 over 500. 500. 500. So this is going to be, I think this is going to be 4.2. X is 4.2 gram per dm. This I can say, therefore, just like molar conch is this, therefore, mass mass conch of B is 4.20. Okay, then we don't know molar mass. Molar mass is unknown. How do we then find the molar mass? Simple to do that. Remember that molar conch molar conch is always equal to mass conch over molar mass. So I know my molar conch as of 0.0395 is equal to mass conch is 4.2 over molar mass. So we make molar mass subject of formula now. So we have now that molar mass, molar mass is equal to 4.2 times 1 is 4.2 divided by 0 0.0395. That gave me that the molar mass is 1. 06.3 but once it's already in place, you can correct it. The actual number is 106. What is the unit? Make sure specifically you put that unit. Your uh, unit is what? Grand Prix 106. And it's like, uh, confirm that that x is definitely going to be any, any. So, because the molar mass of actually Na2CO3 is 106. So that's what's actually. So that is going to give us a clue that what the value of x should be is going to be 23. But we're going to find out uh, via calculation and know that exactly that what is what we have is exactly 23. That it should be that 23. That x should be suspected to be sodium, whose molar mass or whose relative uh, 
about which they are relative mass is 23. But that will be what we're going to find out in the next question. So pause the video and check what we did and uh, maybe try that on your own and see if we are going to... Please, I'm not, we are not saying this video trying to say that this is going to be this, but we are looking at the way to preempt what will come out. Definitely, this is exactly what uh, we observe or we see in Neko and Wayek, just this concluded Wayek. But what are these aspects of alternative B? The same thing, HNO3 and then the same um, uh, base, weak base, NO2, CO3, and then what we but so that is what it is. One post is grab more. So we quickly go to the last question and it where we are okay. I I for V I V value of X. V I I I how do you find value? We have made it seems very, very simple. We already know that the molar mass of x to c3 is 106 from the previous uh, calculation so we have x to c3 let everything here be what we just have 106 so we can find x now here we're going to go out we don't know the molar mass of x so we find out we tend to find out so that's going to be 2x now plus carbon is 12 that is atomic mass of carbon is 12 plus this is 16 there are three atoms of it there three equals to 106 you see have 2x plus 12 plus 16 times 3 should be 40 46 48 okay 48 plus to 106 okay so we have 2x 12 plus 48 should be giving us what take 60 60 plus to 106 2x Equals to, I think it's a formula, I'm going to have 106 minus 60. 2x is, uh, okay, that's 46. 106, that's 46. 46. So if you divide both sides by 2, uh, dividing both sides by 2, we should have 2x over 2 equals to 46 over 2. So now x alone is 23. Okay, that has given us clear that 23 is the mass of sodium. Mass of sodium is simply 23. Okay. That is um if um the axle, but well, you cannot know the value of x if you don't know the molar mass of this. So we even know that if so but supposing that they ask you this thing of the question, maybe molar mass, maybe this is molar mass of the question, but you went. You see the really value of x that means you have to solve previously to find the molar mass of this, which is 106. That's what I did in I I I I, I. Uh, sometimes you may skip this and give it this. So you, you cannot find the value of x if you don't know the molar mass of x. So you have to know the molar mass of x before you find the value of what x. So that is um, what point you need to know then. Okay. And again, okay, that is um on that note. And then we are going to look at the volume of the gas. Because from the equation, from the equation, CO2 is uh, given off, it's liberated. So how to do that is just to let me remind, let me just put up the equation again. HNO3 against uh, okay, still X2, CO3, 2x NO3 plus H2O plus CO2. Okay. We have nothing to do with this man, even though we know it's two moles. It is not a concept because CO2 was actually liberated from this. So we stick from here. One mole of this is what we have here. Against one mole of this. Simple. What is the equivalent of one mole of this? We have it as 106. Okay. And then the one mole of every gas, including this CO2, occupies 22.4 dm. You add STP. You should know this. Everybody, every student in chemistry should know this already. So 22.4 dm molecule, one mole of gas. If it's two, that means you multiply by two. So 106 of this one mole liberated 22.4 dm. So now go back to the question we have 2.1 but you know that that is what it's in 500 so we're going to use the mass concentration which is what is contained in one 
1,001 DNP, which is going to actually be 4 points. So if one of us is liberate this, or is equivalent to this, then 4.2 give you x. So find x. x is 4.2 gram times 22.4 dmq over 106. So as, as x is 4.2 times 22.4. 4.2 times 22.4. Okay. Divided by 106, we are having 0 point it's 0 point it's 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 the MQ. That is if the answer is if you see calculate the volume in DMQ, that is the answer. But they say in centimeter cube. That means you have to know that if one thousand centimeter cube is one dmq okay the what is equivalent of 0 0.888 in centimeter cube we just do x so we have that x here is 1000 multiplied by 0 0.888 over 1 i guess yes so what you do this point is what you do at this point is that dmq here we cancel out. So 1000 times 0 0.888 divided by 1 should be giving you x is 888 centimeter cube. That is the volume of the gas that was given up, given off at that at that time during the course of the titration. Okay, put the video. That is a um, way to solve the volume of the gas involved at standard temperature and pressure. You use all the indices and the parameters you obtain from I. I, 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 they will not get IV as per volume of CO2. Okay, in my next um, um, stage of the question, we're going to go to number two, which is on salt analysis.